Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about jeans. Jeans can be a very tricky thing to find for your wardrobe, and it can get confusing trying to figure out your perfect inseam, rise, color, fit, and all of that stuff. So today, I'm hoping to help clarify some of those things for you and make the process a little bit more enjoyable so that you can find a pair of jeans that you absolutely love and can have around for many years. So let's get started. Let's start things off with how you can find your perfect fit. To do this, you need to understand a couple different measurements on your body and how they relate to jeans. So we're going to start things off with rise. Rise refers to the measurement from the crotch seam to the front of the top of the waistband on pants or jeans. And in my opinion, this is almost the most important number to know. This is something that is not easily altered by a tailor. It's something that's very expensive. If you do find someone who's able to do it, you almost have to rebuild the entire pair of jeans or pants. And then also, knowing this number and finding the magic number for you and your body will help you play with proportions in a way that you like. So it will really help accentuate a narrow waist, make your legs look longer, maybe make them look shorter, and make your torso look longer or shorter, and break your body into segments in a way that you enjoy. You can easily find this number by looking at a pair of pants or jeans you already have and measuring that number on those pants. Now, if you don't know this number, maybe all of your pants and jeans are not a rise that you particularly like right now, then I think you can find a good starting point by taking some measurements on your body. So I recommend getting a flexible tape measure and measuring your waist at the skinniest point, the point that you like the most on yourself, the most flattering point, uh, wherever that is when you look in the mirror. And then taking your hands and marking that and then using that as a starting point to measure down to where the crotch seam would be. Now in theory, that should be your perfect rise. And in my experience, it's almost always correct. I'm usually only off by about a half an inch, either above or below my belly button, depending on the style of the pants. Now let's talk about inseam. Inseam refers to the seam on the inside of your pants or your jeans. It's very straightforward. And this is a number that is pretty easy to alter by a tailor. So if you are someone petite like I am, and you need to constantly have pants taken up, this is a number that you can pretty easily adjust. Now, the only exception would be depending on how tapered something is or how wide leg something is. Sometimes taking things up more than an inch or two will drastically alter that silhouette. So keep that in mind. And if you are trying something on in store that is going to be too long and you're thinking about having it shortened, try folding it under or up to kind of get a feel for how that pant leg is going to look on you when you make those alterations. Now to find this number for yourself, I recommend measuring this on an existing pair of pants or jeans that you have that you really love and then jotting that number down and keeping that in mind when shopping or if you are starting fresh you can do this much like we did the first one to find your rise take a flexible tape measure measure from where the crotch seam would be all the way down to where you would want your pants to hit now it's important to keep in mind your shoes the type of shoes you'll be wearing with these pants and how versatile you want them to be so in my experience, a pair of jeans is the most versatile when it hits just above your shoe. Anything too short and too long tends to be slightly more restrictive. So for me and the shoes that I like to wear, which is a lot of flats, ballet flats, boots, ankle boots, I like having something that hits there because it tends to work with all of them. Now let's talk about jean styles. There are so many jean styles on the market and I think truly something to suit everybody. And like everything else in this discussion that we've had so far, this is 100% customizable. You have to find what's going to work for you and what's going to flatter you and give you the silhouette that you want, as well as working with the other pieces in your wardrobe. So if you are looking for a starting point and you maybe want a pair of jeans that you can wear almost year round, if not year round, depending on where you live, and you want something that won't look dated in a year or two and something that will be versatile and I think flattering for pretty much everybody, then my recommendation would be to find something with a mid to high rise and something that has a straight or slightly tapered, not, not completely skin tight skinny, but slightly tapered leg. 
I think that is endlessly flattering and again, something that will look timeless for a very, very long time. Along those same lines, I recommend finding something in a mid to dark wash blue denim. Something in either a cool tone or a warm tone to suit your complexion and the rest of your wardrobe, and something that is not going to have too much whiskering or detailing on it. And in my experience, lighter wash tends to be slightly more casual. Um, things with fraying and distressing also tends to be slightly more casual. And something that almost looks like a trouser and has a beautiful dark even wash, again in a color that works for you and your style, is something perfect. Now let's talk about material. When jeans first came on the market, they were 100% cotton denim. It's a very durable material, it's something that definitely stands the test of time, and molds really beautifully to your body, so you end up with a pair of jeans that you can wear for many, many years. Now over the years, we started adding some stretch to those jeans, and we wanted them to have a little bit more give. And certainly as trends have come and gone, sometimes a lot of give. So to do that, they typically add a last stain or some other kind of stretchy material, sometimes nylon, to the jeans. And in my experience, that not only decreases the longevity of the life of those jeans, but also can make them lose their shape kind of quickly. So if you want something that's got a little bit of stretch but is still going to look good for a good while, my recommendation is 98% cotton and no more than 2 percent elastane. Now I want to share a couple other things you can keep in mind in order to find jeans that are long-lasting, high quality, and versatile and flattering for your wardrobe. So the first thing I want to talk about is how the jeans are closed. So traditionally jeans are closed with a button fly, that was how they were originally made, and it's typically an indicator of quality. It's a little bit more difficult to put a button fly onto a pair of jeans, so they tend to be slightly more expensive and arguably better made. The downside is that a button fly can be frustrating to put on, especially if you're trying to get dressed really early in the morning when you're half asleep. And then also, button fly doesn't really suck you in the way that zippers do. So if you are looking for a pair of jeans with a zipper, I recommend looking for a high quality zipper, something like a YKK, and something that goes up and down nicely and smoothly, and then also a zipper that extends the full length of the front of the jeans. That is something that's going to help make everything look nice and tight. And it's something that is very important to get right because if the zipper stops too high, it will truncate your body in a way that, in my experience, is not the most flattering. When looking for a pair of jeans that will flatter from behind, it's important to look at the pockets. Pockets have the ability to create illusions and really give us the effect that we want. So typically, the smaller the pocket, the larger the backside will appear, and then also the closer together the pockets, the more lifted everything will look, and likewise the higher the pockets. Ideally, a pocket shouldn't come too close to the seam of where your butt would hit the pants, because that can make everything kind of look a little drawn down. And if you are going for a lifted look, you want to create the opposite illusion. Another indicator of quality in jeans is whether or not they are selvage. Selvage refers to the self edge on the jean seam, and it can be an indicator that the jeans were made in kind of an old fashioned way and certainly in a more expensive way. So they tend to last longer, be more durable, and definitely come with a higher price tag. So along those same lines, SPI or stitches per inch is another good way to tell how high quality something is, and especially when it comes to jeans. So that refers to quite literally how many stitches are in every inch of the seam. So you can hold up a tape measure or a ruler and actually look at how many there are. And when comparing two pairs of jeans side by side, the pair with more stitches per inch allegedly will last longer, is more durable, and should come with a higher price tag because it took more attention to detail. So similarly, you're going to want to make sure that all the stitching is even, whether or not you're looking for a very high SPI or not. You're going to want to make sure nothing's frayed, everything is nice and secure, and especially if you're looking at a 100% cotton pair of jeans, you want to make sure the seams are nice and straight. They shouldn't have any stretch in the material that can contribute to some buckling, and it's something that can definitely help you spot a high quality pair of jeans over a lower quality pair. And last but not least, to ensure that your jeans are lasting as long as possible, I recommend never washing them in hot water and never drying them. Both the heat from the washing machine and the heat from the dryer will help them lose their shape. 
definitely help degrade the dye on your jeans a lot faster, and then also has the potential to melt the elastane and the nylon in your jeans. So that can help them wear out faster and look baggy and lose their shape. So instead, I recommend either hand washing if you can, or washing them in the washing machine on gentle and cool water and then hanging them to dry. Don't ever put them in the dryer because again, they could shrink, they will lose their shape and just not last as long. And nobody wants that when it comes to a pair of jeans, especially if you've spent a good amount of money on them. To close out this video, I want to share a mini lookbook featuring some of my favorite jeans. I have a small collection of jeans that I've gathered over the years, and these outfits are combinations that I've been wearing for a really long time. They're really versatile, comfortable, and easy to recreate if you get inspired by them. So I hope that you like this, and like always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.